So another thing that I think that we definitely should talk about is what people are gonna take from this years down the line and how officials are gonna react. We heard recently um, George Clooney was arrested for his protesting and he yeah. does a lot of work, but how are people gonna become proactive? <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that question. I, I don't know, I think that's a hard one. I don't know how you become proactive or how... Is it just getting on a plane? Like, you went to visit, obviously, not necessarily um, Rwanda. I went to Rwanda, right. yes. And it's not necessarily just taking the plane, but there's so much behind it. Is it just doing that? Because that's what some have criticized, it's, that mm -hmm. the gentleman who made the video that they just went to Uganda and... Saw an issue. Saw an issue and, and then... Followed it went there. Yeah. to create a story. Yeah. Made, made some money off of it you, and don't really care. That's a good way, I guess, to f maybe understand the problem more, but going in there and understanding the history and talking with people. I mean, that's not all of it. I mean, Africans know how to solve their problems more, like bottom line. True. People who live there who have suffered. And there's like this resentment towards colonialism, but already it's it's been over for 50 years, but there's still like uh, this kind of attitude towards it. And I feel like it's still prevalent in a lot of African societies yeah. about the West. And even like with the whole Middle East issue, like they think we're just trying to come in and just change everything, you know? So. And I would say that's probably the case with so many different countries. Yeah. If you look at the Caribbean region, there's so many places there that s still hold that resentment or still yeah. have a tie that they can't let go of. Yeah. Jamaica, for instance, still is dependent on so many things for and Great Britain. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have to wonder why that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But back to your other question, I, the, what can people do in the future and how this will be looked at? I think it's really going to be the success of the ground troops in Uganda because their whole, their whole issue is keeping this whole idea of Coney alive and pressing your congressmen and all your legislators to uh, keep these military forces on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like not, it, I mean, keeping this issue alive is good, but it's really left into the other hands, the, the hands of the military and the government. Yeah. And I think they know already, we need to stop this guy. But but once you, once you get Coney, you got a list of, you know, right. Everyone and else. And the LRA is just not going to yeah, disappear overnight. Is. And the whole slavery issue is not just going to disappear overnight. There's, it's so deep rooted in that culture, and Uganda as a country, and all those you know, Western Central African countries that it just doesn't disappear when you catch one guy. Right. Yeah. And I feel like that's what people think. This guy's gone. Slavery is done. It's, it's the end. Yeah. But I think they need to work with the country itself more and not just go in and say, well, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to do, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're working with the army there, but, I mean, if, if you read some sources, the Ugandan army itself has some human rights abuses. Right. And they have yeah. corruption all exactly. oh, yeah. up and down. So I guess yeah. that could be another topic that we can even touch on is how do you, I don't think fix is necessarily the issue, but how do you give an example where there's not corruption in the army or an example for True. a country like that when mm -hmm. everything inside it still manages with corruption. Bottom line is infrastructure. Like the whole country's infrastructure has to be built up, and that's that's why we have you know Peace Corps, those kind of NGOs there mm -hmm. doing that work, which I think is the most beneficial work. But then, do you break down all the infrastructure and start it again, or do you work with what you have? Because that's been a big debate among obviously like U.S. politicians in so many different cases that they've gone into. Do I just break this nation down? And have it become uh, Americanized. Hasn't worked no. for Iraq. Or, <laughs> yeah. or do I kind of start over or build on what we have? I think it's better to build on what you have, you know, because there's already a foundation and you can just build upon that, you mm -hmm. know. You can't just destroy a city and then start over, you know. So, right. I agree. So, for those, I guess, who are on the campaign, kind of playing devil's advocate, for those who do want to just <laughs> save the world, who want to stop Coney, where I think at one point it says there's nowhere left to run. What do you think they're gonna do? I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to bash anything because I'm all for this campaign and people trying to help and post and things, but I don't know. I think, yes, you should post, yes, you should do this, but you need to do more than that, you know? I mean, if it makes you feel good, it makes you feel better, <laughs> right, I mean, go ahead, go for it. Uh, but I, I just really think it's a bandwagon issue and people have just hopped on this activist bandwagon. So, I mean, doing this is, I mean, it's, people argue that's going to hurt, you know, the, the ground forces in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And it might, you know, I don't know. I don't know to what extent Kony and 
his forces have seen this and I mean they are changing their tactics that's yeah. been and that's one question to ask if he's seen this or he, if he knows yeah. as much and for Maybe those who can confirm that it's kind of questioning too how do you know that he knows I know there's so many different there's webs and it's kind of like I think in some part portions they have pictures or video of Coney and a lot of people have brought up too how do they even have access to this stuff people know where know. he's at yeah you know it's uh, I guess people don't want to snitch give him <laughs> up, some people are saying you know? he's dead and I don't know which brings back like reminiscent of Ob Osama bin Laden when people yeah. kept saying exactly. yours mm -hmm. and he, he died already and this and that but it's kind of left in the open in the air for yeah. society. Just and hide probably and right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just gonna go on two case. <laughs> but um I guess what I want to turn to is what why you two are passionate about it or what you plan on doing in the future to kind of give an example or a story of what you guys want to do with this and not just do a like or a tweet mm. or a share. Yeah, definitely like reposting is good and all of that. And CSU and ASU we're trying to we're trying to do something to promote. But with all the backlash, we're still kind of on the backboard of whether we should, you know, raise money. Because I know there were some issues about where the money's going. Mm -hmm. So I think we're still, you know, trying to decide what we're trying to do. Because I'm all about helping and saving the world. But right. You have just to do it the right out way. Every, yeah. Definitely. I ask, like, where do you start? Like, you go there and you learn about the issues, and it's just overwhelming. I was in Rwanda, and that is an interesting place because they went through the genocide in 94 mm -hmm. so they've had a lot of different issues but they still have the slavery issue um not as much but you know kids that had to escape slavery and a lot of them fled to uganda in refugee camps and then they were sucked into this lra but um i mean liking things is great but uh mm -hmm. i plan to do the peace corps after i graduate and uh nice. i think infrastructure infrastructure is really the most important thing um, currently I'm working on trying to get a, a trip to Rwanda through Loyola, mm -hmm. through Campus Men, um, just so that we can take students who have never even thought about going to Africa or even thought about what can I do to that country and just going there, meeting people and learning about the issues at hand rather than watching some video and reposting mm -hmm. it. Right. I think it's important to go yeah. build relationships and hear stories. Which is something you have to commend the, the three guys who started off yeah, with great. Invisible Children yeah. for doing in the first place because I think some of them might have been 18 or 19 and I don't mm -hmm. think half of 18 or 19 year olds can even fathom yeah. I know. going that far away from home and then going into that type of situation where it's not like a place mm -hmm. in Europe where most of the things are so modernized or yeah. it's very similar to what we're known to. Yeah. And I, always, I think that it starts with education. Like, like we need to educate everyone about this, not just post a video mm -hmm. that's you know that's well like cut and posted and you know all of that right. stuff i think it starts with edu education and then we can go beyond then you know right. i just hope this doesn't crumble under its own success i don't i mean i i knew he wanted it to get big but i feel like it's already been a success when when we send ground forces into uganda mm -hmm. to try to catch this guy like you guys have done You've all done that you can in some mm -hmm. sense yeah so i just hope he's caught but i just hope that this doesn't hinder or hurt in any way, like right. their efforts, or that it's forgotten, definitely. Yeah, and and only mm -hmm. the only time will tell. I mean, right. nothing really. Yeah. So it expires in December, two thousand twelve. Yeah. So uh, we'll see if we've caught them by then. Definitely. But. Well, what we're gonna do is invite you guys to educate yourselves a little bit and do your part and do your job. We're gonna show you a video clip of the original Invisible Children uh, documentary, and as always, you have watched an episode of the Minority Report. And we will see you next time, hopefully more educated. <laughs> yes. Bye. Well, after having seen the suffering of the civilian population in northern Uganda, I'm uh, appalled, frankly. It's a moral outrage to see thousands of children that have been abducted, that are maltreated, 
that are going through the most horrendous uh, torture by the r rebel movement and also the same groups now being neglected to some extent by the whole international community. I cannot find any other part of the world having an emergency on the scale of Uganda with so little international attention. And it's J-S-O-N-R-U-S-S-E-L-L. -L. Have I ever traveled before? Yeah, I have. I've traveled to Africa once before, to Kenya. Nairobi, Kenya. Bobby? Yeah. It's blinking. I don't think there's any tape left. It's blinking red. Number one, Bobby Bailey. That's B O B B Y. My name is Jason Russell. And um, have you ever traveled before and where? No, I've never traveled before anywhere significant outside the states besides Mexico. With Laren, I know that he hasn't even really gotten out of the country very much either. It's so awkward here. It's seriously awkward. Media shapes the way we view our life. What you see in magazines, what you see on the TV screen, what you see in the movie theater is what you know about life. So in a sense, media is life. So we are naive kids that haven't traveled a lot and we are going to Sudan. I really, um, I think it will be fun. I do. I'm not about fun as much as I am like deep, rich, meany. Bobby is Bobby. We all put up these walls and these boundaries. So media is, it, it defines our life. So it is obvious choice to three kids who want to tell the, to find the truth. It's, I don't think, I mean, how fare thee well? <laughs> well, I'm not dating anyone. I don't have a girlfriend. But I really feel like it's going to be a rude awakening for Bobby and for Laren. It's gotta be an adventure. In the spring of 2003, I went to Africa with my friend Laren and my friend Bobby. Bobby, I'm so bright. Are you scared? What the hell is going on? Why, why so bright, you guys? Seriously. Jeez. We didn't go with any organization, and we didn't have money, so we sent out these letters asking for support. We proceeded to buy our cameras and equipment off of eBay, got many shots, and then we set up our camera, thinking that if we didn't make it back from Sudan alive, this is how we'd be remembered. We never thought anyone would actually see the footage. Do I think I'll die? Do you think I will die? Do I think I'll die? Hopefully that we won't die. But hopefully we will. What am I most afraid of? I'm afraid of dying. I'm afraid of... People seeing this movie and... <clears throat> maybe thinking differently of me. Because I'm still the same person that they've always known. Colin Powell has been quoted as saying, There is no greater tragedy on Earth today as the one that is unfolding in the Sudan. He says this because over two million have died and five million have fled the country because of the 20 year long war between the North and the South. The Southern Sudanese have experienced a Holocaust unlike any other since World War II. I had discovered this information a little over a year ago and promptly afterwards decided to go to Sudan, wanting to document this hidden Holocaust and understand the repercussions of such a war as this. I also learned that because of the danger of the war, no one was permitted to fly into southern Sudan. But we decided to go, so we prepared for the worst. You're going for a reason. I mean, you are going to do, um, see the, how other, how bad it is, and to share that with other people. And I think that in itself is something that is worthwhile and that you can bring back to those of us that don't know how bad it is. Um, then I get sad again. 
I love you too. I know. It's just not easy. My heart's good. We left the day the war in Iraq started. President Bush told us not to travel. To disarm the Iraqi regime. But we got on the plane anyway. None of us knew what we were doing. We'd never made a documentary before. We just opened our lens wide and tried to capture any stories along our way to Sudan. It is on. We arrived in Kenya and immediately started documenting a woman named Mama Sapora who single-handedly started an orphanage called Haruma. She has over 100 children. She invited us to one of the Sunday services without informing us that it's customary in Africa for guests to introduce themselves. Most children at Haruma were there because the AIDS epidemic had killed their parents. So we stay with these children. They slept four to a bed and were often fed just once a day. But when they danced, they really danced. 